people that I met has molded my life and uh, the town of Ada, just such a just special people and people that uh, really a family type atmosphere at East Central was my experience and so a lot of my high school friends had gone there and really it was probably not the you know the the, the, the school that everybody thought I would go to. When people come here there's not as much limelight we're not on television but in the end the friendships and the relationships that you make that last a lifetime. I love that university uh, and it, it just gave so much to me and put me in the position uh, I would not be successful. I wouldn't have had a chance to do what I've done today if not for the people that I met in Aid, Oklahoma, East Central University. Once a tiger, always a tiger, even if you're a sun devil. Todd Graham has enjoyed an exceptional amount of success in his career as a player and coach. He first learned the game as a kid in Texas, but his real education, in terms of football and beyond, started in Ada, Oklahoma at East Central University. One ECU coach in particular noticed his great potential. Ron Miller came in and recruited me and uh, just, you know, a guy that was just so genuine and, uh, you know, uh, just uh, a guy that I trusted. What I'd do is I'd go set up somewhere in the Metroplex at a hotel and then I would uh, go to places and get some film and watch it and visit high schools and visit with the coaches. And then I'm watching the film and then all of a sudden this one guy shows up that just taken off the acceleration that this guy has and taking off and moving really well. It's just uh, unbelievable. So I take it back and show it to Pat O'Neill and, and some of the other coaches and say, hey, we got to have this guy. So it all started there. I was getting recruited. Uh, North Texas, UTA wound up canceling their program. Uh, SMU, um, uh, Texas Tech, uh, a lot of the different programs. Uh, and I had a son, had a son in high school. And so uh, they kind of wanted me to go to the junior college route, the major college teens. The fact that Todd already had a family was no deterrent to the ECU coaching staff. They saw a good kid and a gifted player worthy of an opportunity. It proved to be a mutually beneficial relationship. ECU provided Todd with the family and security he needed to truly excel. My dad left and, and, and left my mom with five kids and so coaches wound up being my dad with that dad role model for me and and uh, so obviously when I went uh, went to college at East Central, you know, Coach Miller, Coach Warwick, uh, Coach O'Neill, they become, you know, father figures to me. And, and, and Dr. Williamson, you know, uh, it wasn't just my coaches. It was that you had a, a, a person like that that really looked out for you and a person you could talk to uh, when, when, the, when the, those coaches were making about as hard as they could make it on me in three a days. We had the married student housing accommodations, and so with the scholarship, like a lot of other places, you could work out a deal where they could move in there. And I think it ended up being a good fit for them. And you know, the obvious other part of it was his wife can go to school and maybe we can find a job somewhere to help her out somewhere in town. He uh, was married and he had a small child, and consequently he uh, would keep the boy on quite a number of times. He'd bring him to practice with him, and uh, he'd be in the locker room, go out on the practice field with us, and uh, a dedicated father, I would say. You know, I was a young man from a family that never had anybody go to college. And uh, I remember sitting in that locker room at North Mesquite High School with Ron Miller. He had his old leather jacket on, and he was telling me what East Central could do for me. And they did every single thing that he told me. Todd took full advantage of his opportunities at ECU, a characteristic that would follow him in all his endeavors, regardless of place or situation. As a tiger on the field, he was nothing short of ferocious. When Todd came as a beginning freshman, and I was coaching basketball at that time, I was assistant basketball coach, and so I was around the athletes all the time, and, and I didn't know who all they had recruited, and I didn't know one of them from another, but it didn't take very long to figure out, that, hey, this guy's something special because of the way he can run. He was probably one of the fastest players I ever coached. He had the speed that... Uh, he grew a little bit in, in strength and size, and he became one of my best tacklers. 
he enjoyed hitting people, which requires desire, but he also had the ability to go get the football. And that's where desire really gets uh, into it. If you want to make an interception, you got to work at it. You see this major acceleration. Usually the, the, the difference that I've noticed in all this time in, in, in saying, well, this guy's a really, really good athlete. They just have that ability to edge ahead and, and uh, it's kind of like I said, you, the guy told me to go to a high school game and look for somebody to jump out and then show you something you hadn't seen. Well, Todd, was, Todd was one of those. While Todd was earning his stripes as a player, he was also starting to build one of the deepest and longest lasting friendships of his life. Both played in the defensive secondary at ECU. The two Tigers developed a unique chemistry that would generate success time and time again, first as players and later as coaches. I was a sophomore in college, and I'll never forget the very first time that I really, uh, we were actually doing a one-on-one -on -one drill, and uh, I see this young guy, and, and uh, he's looking across at me. I'm six foot two, you know, 200 and probably uh, three or four pounds at that time, and he was five foot 10, 170 pounds, and could fly, he could absolutely run. So uh, he's looking across there, and I know he's sitting there, what's going through his mind, he's like going, this guy has no chance to cover me. So. He would just kind of look at me and he had to look down and he would kind of point to what direction he was going to break his route off. So I would cover him and, and I, I knew right then I was going to like this guy. They were both very smart, good football minds. I guess Keith kind of took him under his wing a little bit because Keith was older and, and as a result they became very close. It's, it's been a great relationship because everywhere Todd has gone, he's tried to take Keith with him. We were just so different. Uh, just in not only our personalities, but our backgrounds in which we came from, but we had one common denominator, and that was where and how we wanted to uh, coach and how we wanted to go about coaching. The philosophy in which we built that was developed in, in, uh, in the, on those bus trips uh, at East Central University, uh, uh, in those apartments, uh, in those hotel rooms, you know, prior to games and things, that time where you really talk about things that are important in life. I could always tell there was something different about him. I mean, uh, not just uh, the physical stature, but just uh, the way that his mind uh, operated and worked. I mean, we'd be sitting on the practice field. You're talking about 1983, 8 Oklahoma, uh, and we're sitting on the practice field, and he's talking about when we coach, what it's going to be like. When we, He said, one of these days, we're going to run down that ramp at the Orange Bowl. That was always his favorite saying. And I'm sitting there like thinking, what, what are you talking, I'm just worried about what we're going to have for dinner at the training table. And you're sitting there talking about 20 years down the road. But he was always a visionary. He was always looking uh, forward. And that was what was always impressive about him. In his four years at ECU, Todd definitely left his mark. Those Tiger teams are still among the very best the school has ever fielded. And Todd still managed to stand out. Some of the best football players that, that I've been around have were associated with my years at East Central. I mean, it was old school, hardcore, tough, physical football, and only the strong survived. Oh, he was an outstanding leader, you know, and he wasn't beyond if somebody wasn't doing their job <laughs> to jump on him and try to get him back in line and get in the right direction, I think, from all the way around and every view that you could have of his situation on the football field, he was an outstanding leader. You know, my greatest days, uh, when I look back on my football career, was being an All-American uh, defensive back at, at East Central University. I think I started every game there. Just as his abilities had jumped off the screen as a high school player, they would again as an ECU Tiger. NFL scouts marveled at his talent, and the St. Louis Cardinals signed him to a free agent contract. An injury derailed his hopes of a professional career, but perhaps fatefully, it allowed him to return to his original plan of becoming a coach. It also allowed him to carry on the special friendships he had made as a Tiger. Once again, success followed. I wound up getting cut and, and then decided I wanted to, you know, I wanted to go back to my community in Mesquite, Texas and, and, and give back to those kids what my coaches had given me. Did that for three and a half years and it really helped my career. And, and got an opportunity to go back to East Central as the defensive coordinator. And that really defined my coaching philosophy because, you know, we'd gone, when I went back there, it was, the program was down. They had, you know, we had won when I, when I was playing there and then it had some bad years. I think they'd won one game the year before and 
came in in three years, won a national championship. You know, a lot of these coaches are in it to get W's, but he was in it. He was coaching because he he wanted uh, he wanted to do better for the kids. In other words, wanted to find kids that he could help and and that would get better. And uh, uh, I, I saw that in him, and and he had a passion for it. So uh, I was glad to get him back, and I wasn't disappointed. He he was uh, he was that type of guy, and the enthusiasm that he had, he still has. First of all, Todd's the one that co recruited the bulk of those kids that played on that national championship team. Uh, his contacts, and not just on the defensive side of the ball, but he was very much involved in, in recruiting several of the offensive players. But to win a national championship, uh, you know, somewhere in, in every newspaper in the country that has a sports page, it listed somewhere in there that East Central University was the NAI national champion. And so, yeah, that was, that was incredibly significant. Kind of a humorous thing maybe about Todd is in the national championship game, at halftime, going off the field, uh, Ron Miller was the offensive coordinator. Todd told Ron, said, you've got to keep scoring because we can't stop them. And he got enough stops and Ron got enough points on the board where they were the national champions by a couple of touchdowns. That's one of the things that profoundly affected my coaching career and that I really knew that you can accomplish anything, you know, if you set your mind to it. And that's something I'll always be proud of, the national championship that's been won there. You, you know, the pride that I have in that is is big time. And and I think probably the best era, you know, uh, and everybody thinks their era is the best, but you look at the, uh, you know, from 83 through 86 was a pretty pretty incredible year. I think we shared or won the conference championship every year uh, and uh, were ranked, I think, in one, first or second in the nation, you know, uh, in 1984. And uh, I really wanted to win a national championship uh, back then. But we were close, but then to go ahead and get to finish it as a coach and get to win it, you know, all those players that played with me, you know, I felt like we're there with me on the sideline, and many of them stood on the sideline for that game. So that national championship was big for me. So that's kind of, you know, how my career progressed. Todd would parlay his role in ECU's national championship into his first head coaching job. Now that he was calling the shots, he sought out his former Tiger roommate, who had been busy building a coaching career of his own. It would signal the beginning of a long and successful coaching run, still in full stride and he ends up becoming the head football coach at Midwest City, Carl Albert. And then he, the next year, he gets the job at Allen High School, and that's when things changed. He gave me a phone call and said, hey, I'm gonna go to Allen High School. He said, would you be interested in coming? And, and that's where we got started. Uh, I, I chose to leave Edmond Santa Fe High School, went with him down to Dallas, and uh, we started coaching high school football together and began to build the foundation for what our program stands for, even to this day. He's one of those guys, uh, he remember how it was, where he grew up, where he's from, uh, and the people along the way that have helped him. I'm sure there have been a, uh, a lot of connections along the way, and he, he respects that. And he respects those people that have had an influence in his life, just like any of us. There's always been somebody uh, that's had an influence in your life, and he knows that deep down inside. I think if I had to define coach in, in one word, I think loyalty would definitely be at the top of that list just because uh, he. this is something that we had talked about over 30 years ago. We were living in a one-bedroom apartment in 1995 in Allen, Texas, and he would come home and he would tell me what the new school was going to look like. He would tell me what the new football stadium and the, and the football complex was going to look like and, and talk about winning championships. In his words, do it the right way. We're going we're gonna to coach men uh, with character, discipline, smart, toughness. All those four cornerstones of our program to this day were laid in that one-bedroom apartment. That's the foundation for which we built our program around, and we've stayed the course over all these years. Something else that ECU's championship brought Todd was national respect. Although it would take time, the head coach of the team the Tigers beat that day for the NAIA title would reach out to Todd and offer him his first NCAA Division I coaching opportunity. Rich Rodriguez was the opposing coach for the national championship game. He was the coach at Glenville. 
And that spring at a coaching conference, uh, they went up and spoke to each other, you know, just because they had been around each other for two or three days and, and going through the banquets and stuff that were involved with the national championship game. And Rich Rodriguez made the, the comment that the best prepared for the offense, the no-huddle offense that Rich Rodriguez was the first one to, to really run, uh, was Todd Graham. And that uh, he couldn't do everything he wanted to do against Todd's defense because of the preparation. And that really created the rapport. When Rich Rodriguez took the West Virginia job, well, he brought Todd to West Virginia as a, a defensive coach, and then Todd eventually became the defensive coordinator there. Well, that, that's really a, an interesting situation in that uh, they worked together, and now they're vying for you know who's going to be the top dog in, in the state of Arizona, plus in the Pac-12 South. So they know each other very well. Todd wasted no time making a name for himself at West Virginia, with Rodriguez promoting him to defensive co-coordinator in only his second year. The following season, he became the sole defensive coordinator for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. With that promotion came the opportunity to put together his own staff. Not surprisingly, one of the first calls he made was to Keith. I was still at Allen High School, and uh, he called me, and we went back to the University of Tulsa. Uh, coach was the defensive coordinator. They hired me as the linebacker coach. Uh, and that's where things really uh, began to unfold because uh, we took over a program that basically said, hey, I think you got about three years to turn the program around or we're just going to possibilities of canceling the football program and just going to uh, playing basketball. And uh, so we went in there and we just rolled up our sleeves and went to work uh, and was able to turn around uh, the University of Tulsa. We'd won somewhere around 68 games and, and won the Conference USA Championship. So that was really where it got started. We thought that was the greatest job on, on, on earth at that particular time, and we didn't worry about what, the, you know, what was wrong with the program. We just went to work and uh, had great success. As he had done at West Virginia earlier, Todd had helped engineer an amazing turnaround at Tulsa. His national reputation continued to grow, and a few years later, he landed his first Division I coaching job at Rice. After one successful season there, he returned to Tulsa as that program's top coach continuing to win and garner national attention. In 2012, he was named head coach of the Arizona State Sun Devils and has enjoyed great success there, including being honored as the Pac-12 Coach of the Year in 2013. Those familiar with Todd's work ethic expected nothing less. Knowing his background, he knew how to work hard. Uh, just the level of intensity there was with him, uh, just all the way around in everything he did and everything uh, he approached, so it's no surprise to me that he is the head football coach at Arizona State. You got to give us permission to make you the best that you can be, right? I can't make you do anything you don't want to do, but it is my job to strain you. It is my job to force that out of you. Does that make sense? Let's go. Here we go. One line. Let's go. Right here. Well, he uh, radiates uh, positiveness, uh, and uh, there's no doubt that he says what he's going to do, and he does it. Todd is very bright. I mean, a high level of intellect. When you have the tools to work with that he has and you're willing to put forth the effort, there's a pretty good chance you're gonna be successful. Todd's a tremendous teacher. He's a great classroom teacher. In fact, he has an adage that he always tells his assistants, don't tell them, teach them. If you tell them, there's a chance they're gonna forget. If you teach them, they know what to do. Hey, hey, Lloyd, makes it Lloyd. 1001. Mm -hmm. I gotta get, make sense. I gotta, I gotta get elbows locked out, right? Got a long arm him. Long arm him. He lays out the vision, and he has an uh, he has an uncanny ability to push people. I'm talking about coaches. I'm talking about players to be better than 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 what they even believe they can be. You have to love the game of football to want to be willing to get on a bus and ride a bus 15 hours to go play a football game, play the game, get back on the bus, okay, get handed a, a box lunch or a box of chicken and drive 15 hours back and then go to class on Monday. You got to love the game. And so I think that instilled the heart in each one of us that, man, we loved the game. We loved our teammates and we played for each other. And I think that is the one thing that was instilled 
in not only me, but Todd uh, at East Central University. Todd returned to ECU in the spring of 2015 to deliver the commencement address to the newest class of graduating Tigers. He was also named a distinguished alumnus, an honor that for him is every bit as special as anything he has accomplished on the football field. Our teammates, you know, we had the Caleb brothers, uh, you know, um, uh, obviously Coach Patterson here that, that was with me was we and I were free safety and strong safety. We had one of the top defenses in the country uh, when we played there and a lot of guys that had, you know, had transferred from OU and back then, you know, it was the NAIA. And we played a, you know, really, really good brand of football. Some of the battles and the wars against Texas A&I Kingsville, I remember those trips very, very well. Uh, I remember going down and uh, one play that really stuck out to me my senior year is Johnny Bailey, who went on to play with the Chicago Bears. Uh, he had, um, they were, had run the option and the fullback had been really hurting us and we had the ball on their one yard line. I'm supposed to take Johnny Bailey, the, the pitch back, and I decided I was going to take the fullback and so well, I can still see that quarterback pulling and pitching that ball and I chased Johnny Bailey for 90 eight yards and stripped the ball out on the one yard line and recovered it and uh, so uh, I think he had 240 something yards rushing that game and and we knocked 99 off there so uh, and that was the one play that Stan White the scout for the Cardinals is one of the reasons why they signed me the free agent deal but uh, you know I, I more than anything uh, it wasn't just one play that stuck out to me I, I do remember standing on Norris Field and looking down at the clock counting down uh, Northeastern was the last game that I played there. Had three interceptions in that game. I tied uh, for the school record 22, 20 interceptions, something like that. The thing that Todd can do, whether it's a player, whether it be somebody on his coaching staff, if something goes wrong, he's gonna bring it to your attention. And he may rip you one minute, but as soon as that's over, it's over. Todd does not hold grudges. Todd's a second chance guy. Now don't mess up that second time in the same way. All right, here we go. He showed you what was wrong. You need to learn. But uh, a great second chance guy and, and incredible loyalty. Obviously I've worked my whole life to get where I'm at and just love it here. But uh, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. Uh, I've had to do all over again, man. I'm just so grateful I got an opportunity to live and spend time. I spent eight years of my life in eight Oklahoma, uh, four of them going to school and another four, you know, coaching a football team there. And it just molded me in, in so many ways. And, you know, you move on so fast, you don't get a chance to thank people. And uh, I'm proud. And, and I, I was born in Texas. I spent over half my life in Oklahoma. And um, I'll always be an essential Tiger. And I'm very grateful to the people there that afforded me the opportunity. Those who know Todd Bass know he is far from finished. Still a young man by coaching standards, the Tigers' best is yet to come. But no matter how much he achieves, Todd will never forget where he first learned to succeed. For an old boy from East Central University, man, I sit there like, man, and I feel like all my teammates and our fans and, and the people there that made a difference in my life are with me. I've gotten a chance to you know, beat Notre Dame twice and, and to, to, to really experience some great things as a coach. And I'm just grateful. Uh, if not for the people there, I wouldn't be here. He doesn't know how to fail. And his work ethic is incredible. Todd's just not going to let you outwork him. That's not going to happen. He's never, ever uh, not felt compassion and love for the players that played for him and uh, that he recruited. He always, he always had close ties with them, and I think he always tried to maintain those. So, yeah, I'm proud of him. My experience with 8 Oklahoma, it just, it just taught me how to be a winner and to be a champion. And, and I can look a person in the eye. And I learned that in 8 Oklahoma. You shake somebody's hand, you look them in the eye, and uh, man, I, you, you're a giver, you're a taker. You're bright out of your dog. Dull eye. You're a victor or you're a victim. Character is a daily evaluation. It's your choice every day. Respect the past. Honor it by how you live your lives and how you do the things that you do. Don't spend time on things that don't last. Live your life with great pride that you served and you sacrificed for God and country and for family, that you did not compromise any of these three values. God bless you. you know, I, wanna, I want people that, uh, that are hungry, that have that fire, and you can see that fire in their eyes. And, and I had that as a young person. I wanted to be somebody. 
I wake up every day of my life competing. You know, once a tiger, always a tiger, and I'll always be a tiger and always grateful to that institution, to the people there for, for what they did for me. View this program again anytime at www.youtube.com slash City of Ada OK.